What's that word you use? Spoilers. 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 I like that word. I thought you might. Hello everyone, and today we will be unlocking the Review Who box with the keys of Marinus. The Keys of Marinus is one of those early Doctor Who stories that I've only watched a few times, and usually the reason for this is because of the six-part nature of these longer stories, it often makes the pacing feel a little slow. However, having re-watched Keys in order to write this review, I realised that whilst this is one of those stories that I don't watch very often, when I do, I wonder, why don't I watch this very often? It's a really good story. As I previously said, the thing that often puts me off longer stories, i.e. anything over four parts, is the pacing. However, there are some stories with six parts or more that manage to pull this off very well, and Keys is no exception to this. The overall plot arc of the Keys of Marinus is to find the titular Keys themselves, but as each episode takes place in a different location, it feels like you're getting several stories for the price of one. This also manages to bring new danger and tension to the usual cliffhanger endings of the classic series. Normally, it's a case of what's going to happen next, but there is also in these the feature of where is it going to happen next. Each of the mini episodes stand up and present themselves very well, however this does make it difficult to pick out any particularly favourite moments of dialogue as each of the mini stories have their strengths and weaknesses. However personally for me the courtroom storyline of episode 5 not only presents us with some great dialogue but also gives us some more insight into the more relaxed and friendlier attitudes between the TARDIS crew. And you, my friend? Yes. What can I do, Doctor? Trust me. As I previously said, due to the longer nature of this story, it's rather like the dialogue, it's difficult to pick out any particularly great bits of acting. However, as I also said, for me, the courtroom scenes in episode 5 are particularly good. We once again get to see the cunning and quick thinking of the Doctor, proving, once more, that the Doctor may not be as old as he looks. My lords, let me begin by saying that the murderer is without any doubt in the chamber. Can you substantiate this? I can, my lord. You will know his identity in a moment. If anything feels a little understated and dated in this episode, it is the reveal of the Vord. The way that it's shot, only giving us small glimpses of the creature before giving us the big reveal of it creeping out from behind a rock, feels like it should be more of a big reveal than it actually is. No doubt during its time when seen on a small fuzzy television screen, it was something odd and slightly terrifying, but unfortunately by today's standards on a much clearer screen, it does lose some of its tension. Something else which takes away slightly from the story but still adds some funny little moments are the small cameo appearances, particularly in episode 1, by members of the production team. Long before the days where any amount of edits and retakes were possible, seeing these moments left in is a funny little reminder about how much television has progressed, although of course it's always funny when these things still happen today. Earlier I mentioned the Vord, and of course this is the story that introduced them to the world of Doctor Who. They've only ever appeared once on screen, however they made a lasting impression on fans and have since appeared in audio stories, written prose and also comics, most recently having appeared in the up-to-date new series comic The Four Doctors. However, the Vord were originally introduced to be a rival to the Daleks. With Dalek mania being a high point for Doctor Who in the 1960s, it was hoped that this idea could be capitalised on once again and create another villain that could be just as hyped for the Daleks, possibly even more so. The Vord were the first in a long line of monsters introduced to try and fill this role, however whilst some of them did stay with the fans, the majority of them were forgotten in later years. And so the Daleks' popularity as Doctor Who's most well-known villain remained undisputed, at least for another year or so. I'm sure that after having watched it for this review, it will be a long time before I watch The Keys of Marinus again. On a day when I don't have much to do, looking over my classic collection, deciding which I should watch to pass the time, Keys will no doubt be overlooked. And in some ways, 
That's a good thing. By not watching this story as much as I watched others, and not remembering how much I enjoyed it, it means that when I do sit down and watch it, that enjoyment and the question of why I don't watch such a good story more often will still be there. In short, despite the fact that it is not particularly significant to the history of the show, nor is it one of the more memorable stories, the fact that it stands the test of time means that The Keys of Marinus is a story that is well worth watching. And having re-watched it, it makes me wonder, could this be the way forward for a future series? A single central plot arc around which each story of the series revolves. After all, it's not uncommon to hear fans say, is the key to time still out there? And that brings to a close another Review Who. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, favorite, subscribe, share, it really helped me a lot. And be sure to check out the description below for a link to my Patreon. It would really help me a lot if you supported that as well. I salute you all, and I will see you with another video very soon.